G'day everybody, how are you going today? It is so good to see you. I am so excited to be able to present the brand new Nikon ZF. Yes indeed, this is more than technology, this is more than hardware, this thing is just straight up cool. But that's the thing, that's what Nikon has done. Not only have they given us cool, but they have given us the hardware and the technology to match. This thing is toting X speed 7. It's giving us the same autofocus system as we would find in a Z8 or a Z9. But along with that, it is giving us an epic 24 megapixels that can see in the dark, give you high ISO performance. Couple this with high frame rates, 30 frames per second in JPEG, and quick access to your black and white mode at just the flick of a switch. And for the first time in a Nikon Z camera, we have pixel shift giving you almost 100 megapixel files. All of this and more in this extraordinarily exciting new camera from Nikon with a flip out screen. OMG, vloggers, you need this. The ZF here with its siblings, all with very, very similar DNA. Buttons, dials, the look, even the, the mirror box unit. Not that it's a mirror box unit in EVF days, but still all of this DNA has been passed on. And the reality is, look at these two side by side from the front and they're very similar. And if Nikon make a silver topped version of it, they will look extraordinarily similar. Now, yes, there are some significant size differences as we can see here, but interestingly, weight wise, there's not that much of a difference. And this one, I actually have the small rig grip sitting on the bottom of it. Let's take that off. I like the small rig grip. If you buy the ZF on launch for the first month or two, there's a promotion that allows you to get this grip for free. So I think that's pretty awesome. Let's take that grip off. And we can see here, the cameras become similar heights, similar thicknesses, although the ZF is a little thicker. Well, weight, <laughs> weight wise, they're actually very similar. I would guess the ZF might be something like 10 to 20% heavier, if that. We love these. We have a lot of nostalgia for this look, this feel. We just do. The notion, that this is basically existing now in a state-of-the-art camera. Well, that's very exciting. This camera is bigger than the ZFC. Makes sense because it is a 35 millimeter sensor. And to the best of my understanding, this is a new 24 megapixel sensor. Now, what this does for us is it means it has large photo sites. And what large photo sites are good for is shooting in the dark. They're great for pushing up your ISOs. Also what they're great for is they keep you a long way away from diffraction. If you want to shoot above f11, f16, maybe even f22, you don't really have to worry about diffraction. And of course, the smaller your photo sites get, the more diffraction becomes an issue. 24 megapixels is this kind of awesome all-rounder point where if you're a hobbyist, an enthusiast, or you're just going out to have fun, you're going to a party, even if you're a photojournalist, there are so many use cases where 24 megapixels is more than enough. But there is a trick up this camera's sleeve which sadly we can't test yet because we do not have access to raw files when we're working with pre-production models, which is what this is. So everything you see in this video is pre-production video and stills from JPEGs. So we can't show you the pixel shift technology working. There are multiple modes and those modes not only give you increased resolution, it actually decreases ISO noise as well. If you're shooting a landscape that doesn't move at all, like a cityscape, like I love to shoot, buildings and laneways and trash cans and beer cans and beer kegs and so on, they don't move, nothing moves in there. You can get some ultra high resolution low ISO images, and you just have to make sure you've got a tripod with you. That's super duper awesome. And the file sizes, as I said in the intro, are 96 megapixels. Great to see pixel shift in a camera that's got 24 megapixels, because this is giving you in some opportunities when the use case fits 
almost 100 megapixels. And I'm super pleased to see that like the Z8 and the Z9, we have high efficiency star and high efficiency raw compression, making your files about 60% of the size they normally would be. And we also have HEIF. Tell you one thing straight away, that when it comes to handling, if you're used to a Z6 or a Z6 II, the handling on this, it's fast, it's swift. It feels like that first time I used the Z8 and the Z9 where it's just a whole different ball game. Boom. And in case you missed what happened there, that is the 70 to 200 2.8 with the 1.4 teleconverter pulling focus. That is how fast it is. And another thing that makes this new ZF super exciting, of course, is the Xpeed 7 that we've talked about. That means it has the focus detection system of the Z8 and Z9 and it has all of the different detection modes, people, animals, vehicles, and so on. It's all in there. And to the best of my understanding, it's focusing at the same speed as well. And coming over from the Z8, we have skin softening as well as having portrait impression balance. Both of these help to make your portraits look better, smoother, cleaner, finer. Now, this camera is not as fast. It doesn't have the frame rates of a Z8 and Z9, but that's fair enough considering it is half the price of a Z8. It obviously has all of the changes in graphical user interface that the Z8 and Z9 have. And the Z6 and the Z7 has quite chunky things, quite chunky artificial horizon in there. This is much more refined. Everything is just working significantly more smoothly. It's very exciting. 125th handheld F1.2 ISO 800. 4K H265, 24 frames, handheld on the 50mm 1.2 S. Unbelievably stabilised. Another feature that I'm super excited about in this camera is the in-body image stabilisation unit, which Nikon are rating at eight stops of stabilization. Now that's a lot. That's jumping us from the previous 5.5 stops that we had before. This is a big jump. Clearly, this camera has such a, a broad range of potential usages. It can be for portraiture. It can be for photojournalists. It can be for vloggers and it can be for bloggers. It can be for everyday enthusiasts. It can be for travelers. It can be for hipsters. Really, this camera, it does fit a lot of use cases. You could even use it for wildlife if you wanted to, absolutely. But wildlife photographers might want more megapixels, so that's fine. But it's certainly got the autofocus system to match, and it can shoot plenty fast enough with its mechanical shutter. This really is a great all-rounder for all sorts of people, but there are some features, like for example, and this is something that so many people are pumped about, and that is the flippy screen. The flippy screen allows you to vlog and this is something that some people, some use cases have absolutely cried out for. So not only is this a great vlogging camera, like it'll give you all of the vlog stuff that you need. You've got great autofocus, great face detect, you've got audio inputs and audio outputs. So you can put in headphones, you can put in microphones. And if you want to keep the power going for extended periods, we've got USB-C, high-speed USB-C, which also allows for power delivery as well as webcam usage. And we have micro HDMI. But now having the first Nikon camera with a flip around screen that also has in-body image stabilization, and it's not just the previous one, but it's an even bigger unit than we've had before. Like I said, out to eight stops of image stabilization. This makes this the absolute perfect vlogging machine. But now, super exciting, at this more mid to entry price point, we have 10-bit video, and we have 10-bit video in 4K, H.265, up to 60 frames per second. If you need 120, which, Got to be honest, I rarely use, you can get 120 in 1080p. If you want to shoot log, you can do that as well. I love what Nikon have done here. And the moment that I saw this, it was like, that's genius. And there is actually a micro SD card slot in there. Now that micro SD card slot 
That's essentially a card forever. You can just leave it in there forever. And it's essentially uh, like internal storage. It's like internal backup. So this is a dual card camera, two types of SD, the micro and the standard. We all know these days they come in all sorts of sizes and all sorts of speeds and they totally match what this camera is capable of. The storage in this camera is not too slow for the camera. The ZF is toting the ENEL15C battery, which is an improvement over the ZFC. And another feature that people might have been hoping for is pre-release capture. Absolutely, it is here, implemented in the same sort of way as the other cameras, shooting 30 frames per second in JPEG to the maximum resolution, which is 24 megapixels. We were just shooting in black and white mode, the awesome black and white mode. Now we are flicking over to color and video with this lever here that I'm still just getting used to. I've noticed the video is exceeding 30 minutes, so it may well be the same as uh, the Z8 and Z9, two hours. One 25th F4 ISO 1600 handheld at 280 mil, 1.4 tilly. Well, it's pretty awesome how well this is working, stabilized, handheld. It's a pretty compact arrangement and it's looking good. And let's just dial this all the way back to the start. So it's got lots of super duper exciting specs, but this camera is not designed for the ultimate in speed. That's not what it's trying to pursue. Yes, it can do some stuff quickly, but at the end of the day, this is a camera that you take out and you enjoy and you can, you can shoot slowly if you want to. And you can also shoot in black and white. And we have here this dedicated black and white switch. And that's exciting to me. I'm usually someone that processes my images in black and white in post when I finally get there. And I've never actually shot with any of my digital cameras, EVF or beforehand, and put it in any color mode. I've never done that. That's something I either shoot my images fairly natural. As you may know, I shoot my cameras in flat and then do a fairly minor amount of processing. And then if I think an image is gonna be good in black and white, I do that in post. This, in today's age, with an EVF, you can flick to black and white and it takes a millisecond and you're seeing the world in black and white. Now, is that good or bad or better or worse? I don't know, but it's fun. It's really fun and I really enjoyed doing it. But I do think the raw files will be there so you'll still have the color version of the file if you want to. But the files you're looking at now, they are black and white JPEGs captured with this camera. It's a cool camera, it's cool. And of course, the colors. I love all of these colors. And I've got to say to you, that's why this is here. My favorite color is the orange color. And that's the one that I am gonna have on order ASAP. And there's all of those other beautiful colors that you can see right here. Now, when it comes to the interface, this camera is using the same interface that we have found in the Z8 and the Z9. So, as I've talked about and speculated in the past, XP7 has this new operating system. It looks a lot like XP6, but it's not the same. And now this is an XP7 camera, so exciting. Who knows what they're gonna do with firmware, but if it's like the Z9, and we're hoping to see more with the Z8, well, we would hope to see more with the ZF. It's the same interface, it has all of those exciting features. And something that I, for instance, jumped in and wanted to see whether it was there, would it do the Bluetooth time code syncing that I can do here with the Z9, the Z8, and so on? And yes, it does. It has that feature in it, for example. This allows you to time code sync all your cameras so they all have the same time code, and it's just automatic. It's done by Bluetooth. And here we now have this in a Pretty affordable from my perspective, 1999 US dollar camera. It's a super duper important camera for so many reasons because of course it's not a flagship. Of course pros and semi-pros can use it. It's got all of the Nikon chops that we could expect. The files coming out of here, even in JPEG, look absolutely superb. I'd love to know what they've done with this sensor, but there's, there's no chance from my perspective that it's exactly the same sensor that might be in a Z6 or a Z6 II. It's been three years and ISOs are changed. We can see that. ZF, first night with the ZF. This is an epic camera. I can feel all of the Z8 and the Z9 in this camera. This thing has nothing to do with a Z6 or a Z6 II or a Z7 or a Z7 or a Z5. Nothing to do with any of those cameras. It's powerful, it's fast. It's got the graphical user interface of the new cameras. It's got the XP7, it's got the focus system. It can see in the dark. And it's got this ridiculous new IBIS, which is now eight stops. 
of in-body image stabilization. Who's this camera for? Well, from my perspective, it's for everybody. Like, you can use this for all the hipster stuff, street photography like I do, totally fine. If you love your Z6 or your Z6 II, this is a far, far better version of those cameras. So you can be a hipster, you can do your street photography, you can get out there, you can look cool, you can feel cool. This thing feels cool. It has got a lot of heft with it. Everything is high quality. There is no plastic anywhere. So if you're worried about that, you've got nothing to worry about. This particular version right here, I am toting the small rig grip, which just, it basically gives you like an extra eight mil, which is something like a third of an inch. It's absolutely perfect. It makes this thing super easy to hold. Pretty similar to a Z6 experience. But who else is this for? Well, check it out. We've got flippy screen action. There it is right there. There's me, there's me on the flippy screen. I think this could even be used for wildlife because it does have a 30 frames per second JPEG mode. What? And it's 11 frames per second in RAW. That's pretty quick. This camera, well, like the 85 1.2, I kind of think's for everyone and every use case, unless you really need those 45 megapixels. And thus, the fact that we've now got an XP7 camera, we've got the upgrade in video, we've got the upgrade in autofocus, mm. this has sort of been a camera that a lot of people have been asking for. Nikon is a camera and lens company and cameras and lenses will continue to come. I am confident of that, as is proof by this very camera here. It fits in a great place because this is actually a fully professional camera that you could use as a working professional and certainly when you add something like the small rig grip here that just makes the ergonomics better for longer holding you can certainly go this way you can certainly shoot no, it's got it's got a good sound you can certainly shoot this way no problem this is another swiss army knife from nikon that fits in another slot in their category which is like you can kind of have the cool weekend camera, the fun vlogging, blogging camera, the travel camera, but you could also take it on a photojournalistic shoot and shoot the most gorgeous, beautiful images. Put on the 85 1.2, put on the 85 1.8, and it's gonna sing. All right, so let's put this ridiculous lens on here. Feels great. And what if we put this on here? That feels great. And I haven't done this before, let's have a look. Oh my God. <laughs> that is instantaneous between the camera and the object behind. Beautifully and stabilization is superb. You can go from ridiculous pro lenses like the 85mm 1.2 to whatever. You can use the retro inspired 40mm, the 28mm and anything in between. All right, everybody, I'd love to hear what you're thinking about the ZF. Is this a camera that you might consider getting? What are your thoughts? Do please let me know in the comments below. As always, it's been so good to see you. It's really exciting to see the trickle down of the XP7 technology coming into a camera that's bringing some cool new features into the Z space and also bringing a lower price point and just some fun, some fun. We can't get enough fun in the world these days, that's for sure. It's been so good to see you. If this is your first time here, I'd love to see you again. So please do subscribe, please share, and please like. Now you're gonna have to chase me to get this thing off me. <laughs>